The country has now been rolling out COVID-19 vaccination all over the country. First are the healthcare workers in different government and private hospitals. But a lot of my patients are asking whether if these vaccines are going to be available for the public, are they eligible to receive one? Because first, they have diabetes. Second, they have hypertension or some other comorbid conditions. Watch for this video if you want to know if you're eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. <laughs> one of the common questions I always get. Am I eligible for COVID-19 vaccination? Most patients are really eligible for COVID-19 vaccination, but it's also best that before you subject yourself to COVID-19 vaccination, know what conditions will need clearance from your doctors before screening for COVID-19 vaccination. So it's very important that there are certain groups of people who will need clearance from their doctors prior to COVID-19 vaccination. And one of these would be immunocompromised people. Right now, we don't have any data available to establish the COVID-19 vaccine safety and efficacy in these groups of patients. However, we have to remember that the currently available COVID-19 vaccines are not live vaccines. And therefore, in general, they can be safely administered to immunocompromised people. We know from these different clinical trials of COVID-19 vaccines, people with stable HIV infection who are categorized as immunocompromised hosts were included in these trials, although data remain limited. So in general, yes, immunocompromised people can still receive COVID-19 vaccination. However, data at present are currently insufficient to inform the optimal timing of COVID-19 vaccination among people who are planning to receive immunosuppressive therapies. Ideally, however, it is our recommendation that COVID-19 vaccination should be completed at least two weeks before the initiation of any immunosuppressive therapies. How about our diabetic patients? Some sectors categorize our diabetic patients as immunocompromised, specifically if they have poor control of blood glucose, because poor control of blood glucose do affect the immune system. Likewise, we all know that diabetics, especially if they have ongoing comorbidities, including complications of heart disease and kidney disease, are categorized at a very high risk. Diabetics, as we know, are, puts them at high risk of developing COVID-19 infection. Therefore, are these diabetics eligible for COVID-19 vaccination? So since they're categorized at high risk groups and therefore a priority, it is very important that they do receive COVID-19 vaccination. At present, we don't have sufficient data to show that COVID vaccines do interact with any of the patient's medications, including insulin. If they have complications of diabetes, which put them at high risk of severe illness and COVID-19, then getting the vaccine for these groups of people is really very important. Caution, however, for most of our diabetic patients because taking the vaccine may make your blood sugar levels go up. As you see, when you get the vaccine, your body starts to produce what's called an immune response and the body is just reacting to the vaccine because it is new to you. As a result, this will transiently increase your blood sugar level and therefore closely monitor your blood sugar probably 24 to 48 hours after your COVID-19 vaccination. 
one important other condition that needs clearance from your doctor if you have so-called autoimmune disorders. At present, we don't have any available data on the safety and efficacy of these vaccines, but what we know is that so far, there are no imbalances observed in the occurrence of symptoms based on clinical trials of COVID-19 vaccines. Thereby, it is recommended at the present time that people with autoimmune conditions can still receive the authorized COVID-19 vaccines. But one of the most common questions I have are the autoimmune thyroid disorder patients. Remember, Autoimmune thyroid dysfunction, like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, or in any patients who are toxic goiter due to uh, Graves' disease, are categorized under autoimmune thyroid disorders. Having a thought of autoimmune thyroid disorder does not, however, mean that you are immunocompromised. Because the part of the immune system that's responsible for the autoimmune thyroid disease is actually separate from the immune system that's responsible for fighting off infections like COVID-19. So my uh, assurance to most of my patients who are suffering from any autoimmune thyroid disorder, as long as you're medically stable, including autoimmune thyroid disease, all of these conditions should receive the COVID-19 vaccine safely. Malignancies are one of those conditions which also need clearance from their doctors, depending specifically on many factors, like the type of cancer you have, or if presently what treatment you're in, and if at present your immune system is working properly. It is therefore best to talk with your doctor before getting any type of vaccine. For my patients who suffer from a thyroid malignancy, the most common is papillary thyroid cancer. It is not at present a contraindication to receive any of the COVID-19 vaccines. One strong contraindication to COVID-19 vaccine is if you have a history of anaphylaxis, specifically if you develop a severe form of infection on your previous dose or any component of the COVID-19 vaccine. However, if you only have a history of immediate allergic reaction to any other vaccine like flu or any injectable therapy, as a precaution, it is not a contraindication to COVID-19 vaccine. Allergic reactions, likewise, not related to vaccines, but related, for example, to food like egg, pet venom, or environmental allergies, or even to oral medications, are also not a contraindication or precaution to COVID-19 vaccination. If you are allergic to latex, the vial stoppers of most COVID-19 vaccines are not made of natural rubber latex and therefore it is also not a contraindication for you to be vaccinated. So the bottom line of what I have discussed with you today is that all patients, almost all, can be vaccinated except only for the very few. And that COVID-19 vaccines so far, overall, have been shown to be safe, including our Sinovac and Astra vaccines, with so far no interactions noted with the commonly used medications. After your vaccination, it is routine that you will be monitored for 30 minutes to one hour for any allergic reaction and other adverse events. Most of the hospital centers with vaccination areas are equipped if you develop some form of allergic reaction. And therefore, no need to worry. Vaccines are present are in short supply to protect everybody. And you may have remembered, if you have seen from the newspapers, that we have a current surge of COVID cases. While awaiting the vaccine, 
there is one common denominator among our patients who are presently admitted or become positive due to COVID-19. And that is eating out with people they consider friends or relatives. Therefore, they think it's safe to eat out with them. So eating out with people not from the same household is one of the common ways to spread the virus. And therefore, if you're still not vaccinated at the present time, stay home, continue to wear masks, and observe all safety protocols. So I hope this video helps. If you want to be sure whether you're eligible for COVID-19 vaccination, it is my advice that you seek a medical clearance, whether your diabetes, whether your thyroid, or whether your condition is safe enough to receive the COVID-19 vaccination. Please stay tuned for more videos and thank you again for tuning in to my YouTube channel.